In the next few videos, we're going to cover the circulatory system. This video is going to introduce the circulatory system and discuss the different blood vessels in the body. So first of all, the circulatory system is composed of the cardiovascular system and the lymphatic system. The cardiovascular system includes the heart, blood vessels, and blood, and its primary function is to deliver oxygen, nutrients, and waste throughout the body. The lymphatic system includes the lymphatic vessels, thymus, spleen, lymph, and lymph nodes. The lymphatic system has an important immune role and also functions to filter and return the lymph fluid back into the heart. In subsequent videos, we'll go through the lymphatic system in more detail. For now, we're going to focus on blood vessels, which are a component of the cardiovascular system. The blood vessels essentially carry blood throughout the body. The blood vessels that carry blood away from the heart are called arteries. Usually you think of arteries as carrying oxygenated blood, but that's not always the case. And that's because the body has two different circulations that you can see in this diagram. The systemic circulation is carrying blood to the different tissues and organs in the body. In this case, these arteries are carrying oxygenated blood. There is also a pulmonary circulation. Here, the arteries are carrying deoxygenated blood to the lungs so that the blood can get oxygenated. So the important point here is that arteries can carry both oxygenated and deoxygenated blood depending on the circulation that you're focusing on. And the commonality here is that arteries carry blood away from the heart. Now, there are a couple additional points of arteries you want to know. First of all, the blood in arteries are under high pressure because they just got pumped out of the heart. This high pr pressure in the blood essentially pushes the blood along through the arteries. Also, the arteries have a smooth muscle layer that is important for regulating blood flow in the body. So as an example, if a bear jumps out at you, that's going to trigger your fight or flight response. Your body is going to dilate the blood vessels, the arteries, delivering oxygenated blood to your skeletal muscle, so that way you can run away. At the same time, it's going to constrict the arteries delivering oxygenated blood to your digestive system because during the fight or flight response, you don't want to be using your oxygenated blood to digest food. So essentially, this smooth muscle allows the body to regulate the delivery of oxygenated blood to different parts of the body. Next, we can talk about capillaries. Capillaries are important because they are the site of nutrient and waste exchange. And to facilitate this exchange, the capillary walls are a single layer of endothelial cells, very thin to facilitate this exchange of nutrients and waste. Now, in terms of what happens at the capillaries, it's a little complicated, but we can see how it works in this diagram. Essentially, there's a difference in terms of what happens at the artery side of capillaries and the vein side of capillaries. At the artery side of capillaries, the blood is under high pressure because again, it's pumped from the heart. This high pressure of blood at the capillaries from the artery side forces fluid out. So at the artery side of the capillaries, there is a loss of fluid. And as the blood travels through the capillaries, fluid is lost, but also the carbon dioxide, the nutrients like glucose and oxygen, they're being exchanged. What isn't being exchanged are large proteins. They are too large to pass through the capillary walls. So as the blood moves through the capillaries, the concentration of proteins increases because the fluid volume is decreasing. This is going to cause fluid to move into the capillaries at the vein side of the capillaries through osmosis. So we say that this osmotic pressure draws in fluid on the vein side. So again, we can say that the high pressure on the artery side of capillaries forces fluid out and the osmotic pressure draws fluid in on the vein side. And overall, there is a net loss of fluid. So that means more fluid is forced out of the capillaries than is reabsorbed back in. 
in subsequent videos, we'll talk about what happens to this net loss of fluid. Because if fluid is being lost at your capillaries, then you would expect all of your tissues to swell up with blood. And as we're gonna see, the lymphatic system has an important role in reabsorbing this loss of fluid. Finally, we have veins. So veins are blood vessels that carry blood to the heart. Again, they can be oxygenated or deoxygenated depending on the circulation you're focusing on. So in the systemic circulation, these veins are carrying deoxygenated blood back to the heart. In the pulmonary circulation, veins are carrying oxygenated blood back to the heart. And with the veins, there is a difference from arteries because the blood in the veins is no longer at a high pressure because it wasn't pumped out of the heart. So since the blood is under a low pressure in the veins, there has to be some other mechanism for getting the blood back to the heart. And part of that is through what is called the skeletal muscle pump. So the veins are essentially situated between skeletal muscles. So you, when you walk and you move around, your skeletal muscles contract. And as you can see in this diagram, when the skeletal muscles contract, they squeeze the veins. And when they squeeze the veins, they push the blood through the veins. And this helps to push blood back to the heart, but also important, the veins also have valves that prevent backflow. So this essentially helps to bring blood through the veins back to the heart.